everybody, it's the coach, and this is Madden 20 on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got a terrific matchup on tap between the Atlanta Falcons and the Carolina Panthers. I'll be back with you again with scores around the league at halftime, but kickoff right around the corner. And standing by to call the action, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Well, it is just the perfect time of year for a trip to the Carolinas, and that's where we find ourselves at Bank of America Stadium in Uptown Charlotte. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the Atlanta Falcons and the Carolina Panthers. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, we look at this Panther ball club as they interplay here. The losers their last time out, so they'll look to make amends here. And one of the best ways you can do that is to be at home, and they are. They're going to try and ride that home crowd and that wave of emotion to a victory in this one. Meanwhile, for the visiting Falcons, they've been as hot as anyone. The win last week makes it 9 out of 10. The results are hard to argue. If there's a team better suited for the postseason right now, I don't know who they are. season is upon us. We've got the gift of the NFL as we're underway here in week 16. This one taken just inside the 10. And he'll be brought down here as the penalty flags come in right away and we may have a face mask here right at the start. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that one looked pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a five yard or a 15 yard inadvertent or not. Now it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. Now it's first and 10. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. Looking to throw. Nix. And his first pass here is going to fall incomplete. That was Dante Jackson, the one who got a hand in to knock it away. Back to the air on second down. Nix. And he's going to go down. They sack him back at the you 42. See me? You see me? They can't stop me out here. All right, partner, I'm going to be Captain Obvious right here. Not the start you're looking for offensively, right? Incomplete pass followed by a sack. And when he went down, it looked like that right ankle got turned, but thankfully he popped up okay, and they breathed a sigh of relief on that sideline. And I don't think this is the script they had in mind for their opening drive. This is third and long. Back to throw. Nix. And a catch made by Johnson. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. There's an example of good situational football being played by a defense. They understood where the third down play was, the down and distance, and made sure that they didn't get anywhere near that bringing up fourth down. Yeah, they were sniffing out that marker, didn't want to let him get close to there, and now a likely three and out to start. Yeah, I love the way they rallied to the football, got to him, and made sure he didn't give up much run after catch. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he's into the clear, past the 20. Touchdown, Carolina. A great play there. His third touchdown now on the year, as his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. An ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turned into his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys, it's just like a boxer in the gym preparing for the fight. Now we get to turn it all loose. Hopkins with the extra point, and that makes the score 7-0. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. 
And a nice job there as he gets this one up just shy of the 35-yard line at the 34. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves... And nothing but daylight ahead. And he is into the end zone for a Falcon touchdown. A great effort there. His third touchdown now on the year as his guys are on the board here in this first quarter. Well, go ahead and strap in, partner. We've <laughs> less than two minutes in, had the score on the one side. A quick answer, though, to get the equalizer. Sometimes you get that sense of urgency that ratchets up, right? When you give up an early touchdown like that, you just know you're like, okay, how do we go back and equalize things? Can we get it done fast? And they absolutely did. Essentially, we're back to even, aren't we? So all even at seven now as they kick it away. Let's just feel it at the goal line. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. This Carolina offense at the line, ready to go. The partner just looking at some of the struggles they've had this season. The playoffs are not in their future. As they start to peer toward the offseason, what moves might they make? I think the running back position, and I know we talk all the time about the... And he'll take this into the end zone. Touchdown, Carolina. A big play there. 78 yards. And the Panthers have taken the lead. Extra point good by Hopkins. And that makes the score 14 to 7. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This one taken from the 7. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple Let's extra go, yards up to the 27-yard line. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. And coming off a one-play drive that was so deflating for the defense, what, what's their mentality? How do they rally here and stop this offense? Well, hopefully there's some determination that sets in because I, they weren't ready to go on the last one. Give all the credit to the offensive guys for getting it done, but to allow a run of that length, that's just not being prepared. So now, are they determined? Are they ready to read their keys and make the proper plays? And we'll see how determined they are. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. First connection there of the afternoon for those two, and it's good for a first down. I think defensively you're okay with that. Here in the first quarter, he's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs and you tend to stall them out when you do that. No yardage to speak of whatsoever. Leads to a third down. Looking to throw. Nix. This is Johnson. He's got it. And he just falls short down at the one-yard line. They're able to convert on third down and that sets up a first and goal. After the big play, a chance to finish now on first and goal. They'll try to run this one in. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Now that sends him two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. From back at the four, here's second and goal. Second and four. And he is going to go down. Back at the 11-yard line. They need to reverse the trend. The last two plays have gone backwards. Now it's third and goal. From the gun, Nix. And he'll take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Atlanta. J.J. Artega Whiteside, his fourth touchdown on the year. As they are an extra point away now from tying this football game. That's one of those long drives where not only do you score, but you really tire out the defense, too. That's a great point, because now they've been on the field for a long time. Them going to the bench, trying to make adjustments, trying to figure things out. But they'll do so fatigued. 
Extra point up and good by Sanders, and we are tied at 14. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone, and no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Getting set to go again as we look at the back heading onto the field again. And he's found the end zone twice, and now I'm guessing he's thinking, hey, let's find it three times. And you got to figure from the defensive perspective, how has he gotten there twice? What are we going to do to keep him out for a third time? How do we tighten things down? Because he and his offensive mates, they are really in sync right now. The Panthers out there and ready to begin their next drive. And they hit the home run last drive. One play on the ground all the way to the house. Now the defense, maybe they're expecting a run here. Partner, I love your description because when we talk about hitting the home run, we're usually thinking about a passing play, aren't we? Something in the air, deep ball. But how about them just taking it? Big time jaunt. Now if you're coming back out, now they've established this run game. The play action pass could very well be open. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. 13 yards, first down, Panthers. And that'll hurt the average a bit as this time they're able to get him behind the line. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. You got nothing to win. You got nothing. Fight! On second down now. It's Hubbard, and now the ball's out. Fumble near midfield. Your trip is here, baby. Your trip is here. On the wow, set. that ball gets knocked check, free, check but a teammate ball. comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Tremendous coverage there. Just did not catch the football and complete the interception. But what do they say all the time? If he had really good hands, he'd be playing offense. You're right. You're right. So well done right. there. And these punters, they get more specialized and better each and every year, don't they? They sure do. And now it's really not the American punters. It's the Australian punters with their kicking academies and that flat drop and just kind of kicking the nose of the football. They're able to almost stop it where they want to, like a good golfer can check one up. And two stop. And to give this time to the tailback. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he will take this up to about the eight-yard line. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. On third down, Nix sliding out of the pocket. He can run for it, and he will. And he nearly got the first himself, but it appears he's going to be about a yard or two short. It'll be a gain of nine, and that'll bring up fourth down. That was a good effort there, trying to do it on his own. But as a defender, you're in a tough spot because you have coverage responsibilities behind you. And if you take off too quick to try and get him down, he might loft it over your head. So better to track with your man defensively than try to go up and make a stop on the quarterback. Exactly right. What you're hoping is that your guys in the front seven can get him down. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely yeah. ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the 5. Superb. They'll try to get forward, but he's going to be stopped at his tracks at about the 3. And the big boys up front in the trenches. What do you think of the O-line, Charles? I love them because this is a group that's so cohesive. They know what the man next to them is going to do at all times, and they operate as a terrific unit. The first carry now for Tony Pollard. And a nice pickup as this one gets him to the 10-yard line. He's able to rattle off six on the carry, and that'll get him to third and four. Out of the gun now on third down. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. It's a Carolina first down on a gain of 16. Set the tone, defense. Set the tone, defense. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. This one complete to Curtis Samuel. 
A gain of six there on first. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. They'll try the left side. Hubbard. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They'll go with Pollard here on first down. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. It's a Panthers first down, 17 yards on the play. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 45-yard line. He'll drop to throw. And that's going to be knocked away and incomplete. And with it, time has expired on the first quarter. These two teams all tied after one. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Second and ten. Hit from behind, and he's going to be driven down. This offensive line has struggled. In fact, when we sat down with the coach, he said, it's been in tatters lately. They allowed six sacks in their last game. Just gave up another one right there. In tatters, so it sounds a little bit like this right now. Exactly. It's like that paper being ripped. And right now, they've got to find a way to get it back together. Certainly not what they wanted there. No gain, and it's fourth down. Usually the offense has an answer to anything a defense throws at them, including a safety valve. And that's what they did on that play. They went there, but the defense still made an excellent play and held them to no game. So out come the Falcons now. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. One of the things you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. To throw on second down, Nix. Johnson's got it complete. And he's gonna get this inside the 30. I'm going back to you. I'm going back to you. Now they try the right side here. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And it'll bring up a second and 13. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll get about three as he's brought down to the 28. The Falcons on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and 10. And it's complete, Hooper. And they're gonna have another first down as the tackle's made at the Panthers' 12-yard line. Well, sometimes our pre-game meetings do pay off, don't they? What do the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he... Now the ball comes loose, and it's picked up by the Panthers. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Often on fumbles, you look at the guy who coughed it up and say, geez, what did he do? But hey, let's tip the cap to the defense here. Not a problem at all, my man. I'm not going to tip it. I'm going to doff my cap to him. Congratulations. Big time play. Knocking it free and creating something good for your team. Here's the Carolina offense as they get ready to take over here. Well, they're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. A gain of three, second down. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. The second down play results in a loss of two yards. 
Well, Brandon, he's had a great day, but sometimes the other guys make a play against you. What's that expression they like to use in the NFL? Those guys get paid too, you know. Yeah, in college they say, hey, they're on scholarship too in the NFL. They're getting paid too. With the day he's had, you can have one go in the wrong direction. The Panthers on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and nine. They'll look to throw. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And brought down, but not before reaching the 25. Give him 15 there, and the Panthers have a first down. Those are the kinds of plays right there that show you why he's the number three man of the NFL in terms of receiving yards. Also tells you there's a full combination of what he's got going in his game. You name it, from route running to catching the football, that's why he's able to produce those types of numbers. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. He got 29 yards that time. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Curtis Samuel, the one he was looking for. But it's going to be second down. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. He fights forward for a couple with a penalty flag down. And the linemen, they're already walking back. That hold coming from the middle of the line, the center. And it's difficult for him because sometimes you've got people right over you, and as soon as you snap it, trying to get your hands up and block them, you can be a little bit late getting it done. The throw over the middle, taken in. And he'll get it down here to the 43. If they didn't have that penalty a moment ago, it'd be a first down. Still a nice 13-yard pickup. Looking to throw. And he's unable to haul it in. So it falls incomplete over the middle third of the field. And that brings up fourth. After watching him drop that slant, I can hear my old coach's voice ringing in my ears right now. You can't run with the ball until you catch it trying to get those rack yards before he secured it. Let's go, baby. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And they'll be looking to atone for last time's mistake of fumbling inside the red zone. Certainly they don't want to do that again. And so much emphasis placed on red zone offense. I mean, you have periods devoted in practice just for that because everyone knows how vital it is to put points on the board when you've entered that part of the field and to come away with nothing that's difficult for a team to handle. And difficult, and now we'll see if they can make it less difficult on themselves on this drive. And that's going to go as a loss of six, and it'll set him back for second down. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he's going to take this up past the 10 to about the 11. The linebacker, Preston Brown, brings him down. Looking to throw on second down. Nix. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. They'll get nothing out of that one, and it's going to lead to a third down. They had the catch on second down, but it didn't help at all, and now they're looking at third down here. Back to throw. Nix. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And they snap him short of the first as he can only get to the 20. Eight yards on the screen there, not enough, and it'll be fourth down. He dialed up the screen pass on third down, and for a second, it looked like it was all going to come together, and they had a chance to pick up a first down, but the defense got there and finished it off. So a change of possession here on the punt, and the Panthers will take over now first and 10. There's D.J. Moore as he and the rest of the offense head back out there. Well, he's within shouting distance of a 1,000-yard season. Going to need a pretty good finish, though, if he wants to reach that mark. Well, I like how you phrased it, partner. He is within shouting distance. If he stays on this pace, he's got a shot at it. But he needs a big game in there, right, to make sure that he gets it. So you know that during the week, in practice, and, and look, he asks for the ball all the time anyway. He's really going to ask for the ball and let his quarterback know he's open. There to stop him, Jawan Bentley. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. And to give this time to the tailback. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. The Panthers on third down, two for five to this point. This time they face a third and two. Trying to run for it with Pollard. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. 
It goes as a gain of eight, and it moves the chains. When you're dead last in the NFL in third down conversions, the odds are against you every time you face it. How about him picking up that one? That was big for them. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. And a movement there coming from the middle of the line. And you understand he wants to get off the ball quickly, but the ball's right in front of him. He has to watch it move first. So a first and five now after the five-yard penalty from the neutral zone infraction. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. And nearly picked off there, almost intercepted. Instead, second down. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Second and five. In a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 38, and they take possession of the football and have it at the 36-yard line. A minute 55 left to go in the first half of play. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Operating from the gun, Nix, and an alley to run. The escapability in evidence there is that one good for 15 and a first. Looking to throw, Nix. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. Back to throw now on second and 10. And it is true, you can draft the fastest, you can draft the most athletic guys, but if they don't know the art of positioning, sometimes it's all for naught. In this case, in the right spot, that force the incompletion. Well, yeah, had his hands on it for a second. Would have been a tough catch though, falls incomplete. Now the Falcons gonna use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a tick under a minute to go before half. This quarterback now 13 of 15 passing. That's good for 87%. It's first and 10. He'll run it. The Falcons gonna use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Back to throw. Nix throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And he'll get it here to the 10 yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. From the gun, Nix. And now he's going to use his legs. Give him a couple on the scramble. It's second down. Here's second and eight to his left and hit behind the line he lost the football it's loose and this is going to kick out of bounds boy a fortunate bounce or two there they'll keep possession back inside the 10 yard line to throw on third down Nix. now here's a timeout as they're going to get it with eight seconds remaining here in the first half so they won't get a touchdown, but here's a chance to at least get three to end the first half. This a chip shot, a 20-yarder. Sanders kick is good. And they take a 17-14 lead. So we will not go into the lockers tied. We do have a leader in the clubhouse, so to speak. Yeah, it's only three points. Doesn't seem like much, but it looms big the way that they got it done right before the half ended. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Final play of the first half, barring a penalty as they come up on first and 10. They'll throw now on the final play. He's going to loft this one deep left sideline. And that'll wind up incomplete. Try to give his man room to run under it, but it's second down. So we've hit halftime, just a field goal separating these two teams at the break. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. The weather might be cold, but the playoff races are heating up here on this final Sunday before Christmas. So let's get to it.
Lastly, let's check on one final game for you. And you can see they are scoreless as they play the second quarter. Meanwhile, in our game, no shortage of offense as each team has been able to move the ball effectively. Will the defenses show up in the second half? To find out, we give it back to our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Thank you, sir. A field goal separates these two teams as we come back for this second half. The Falcons back to receive. They've got the lead, and they'll get this football as the second half gets underway. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Out come the Panthers. They'll have it first on offense in the third quarter. They're down here, but very much in this game. What, what's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. It's a four-yard pickup there, and it leaves him with third and five. They'll look to throw. And a quick throw here. That's complete. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after Here we catch. Go. Here we go. They did a really nice job Here there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. Here comes the Falcons offense. It's their first possession of the second half now. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. Now how about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. So they come out of the locker room trailing, but plays like that, they won't be trailing much longer. Defense really starting out well this second half. Yeah, they knew they had to jumpstart things a little bit. They really struggled in the first half trying to slow them down, but now they had a plan, made that adjustment that we always talk about, and it worked very well on that play. Second and long. He's got Freeman here. It's complete. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They've become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. He opted to go with a scramble, gets two yards, and now it's fourth. Now how about that play? He took a possible negative and turned it into positive yardage and slid down to avoid taking a big shot. Excellent job getting down and avoiding the big hit. So possession goes over here on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. And we have seen a decline in the numbers. Where does the fault lie? Just him, maybe the guys up front combination? Well, as you and I both know, it's almost always a collective deal. But in this case, I think maybe the offensive line got a little overconfident. They had blocked so well in the first half, picked up on what the defense was doing. I think we've seen an adjustment now that they have not picked up on, and now they're being a little bit overwhelmed. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you got a heck of a tight end candidate. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Now this one over the middle into the hands of his tight end complete. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. They'll run on first down. It's Hubbard, and he's going to be stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. Nothing there for him. Second down. Ready, ready. 
Now he'll look to throw here on second and ten. And he's got the hook up to Moore. And he fumbled it. It's on the ground. And the Falcons grab it. And he's able to get it back here to the 43-yard line. Well, he did what he's known for. He made the catch, then he turned into a runner, took the contact, and coughed it up. And all I remember as a player, when they catch the ball, when those acrobatic guys catch it, you have to make them pay sometimes. You have to put it on them, big tackle, knock the ball free, anything you can do to slow them down. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. Operating from the gun. Nix, nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Like how they've started the third quarter here. They force a punt on the first drive, and after this sack, it looks like they'll be forcing another one as well. Absolutely. Maybe got their second win coming out of the locker room. That's complete to Ortega Whiteside. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. 14 yards is the pick up there, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. The Falcons send out their punter. He's been terrific so far. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. This Carolina offense at the line, ready to go. And we have seen a lot on the scoreboard here this quarter. So you know, sometimes you talk to me about tendency breakers on offense. These defenses struggling. Are there tendency breakers on defense? All defensive coordinators keep something in their hip pocket for these types of situations. What can we do to slow down the onslaught? But the biggest thing is... Oh, he tried to pitch it, and the ball's loose. So quick on the spin. Oh, he's spinning, man. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. And now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. This defense is continuing to contest every deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone. Eventually, that becomes man on man. And you've got to trust yourself and go up at that moment of truth and make a play on the football. And when it's said and done, it's a 58-yard punt. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. 10 Lobo. Right, 58, right there. You ain't going nowhere. Now a handoff here to his running back. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. To throw on second down. Nix. Now they go screen. It's complete. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield, a really nice pickup. And not much there at all. Maybe a yard up to the 43. And he'll give it here to his running back. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 14 yards there and a Falcon first down. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. So from Panther territory now, it's first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Looking to throw. Nix. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. Give him eight on the play, and it'll be second down. 
Now that's often a surprise for the defensive guys when they see the big fella slide out of the backfield and catch the ball. Not something they usually go over in practice very often. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. So first and 10 now from the 30. Back to throw. Nix, and this one caught by Max Williams. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Looking to throw. Nix, complete, it's Johnson. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he gets this down to the 18. Good enough for a first down. And look like some movement there. Let's get the call. That's some momentum going, driving down the field. That'll set him back first and 15. I mean, that type of play, when you've got to go in your direction, shoot, my man Old Mo is arching an eyebrow at him right now. You've got me going. Keep me going. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. And we're back now in Charlotte. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point, just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. They'll run it now, out of the gun. This carry with the extra effort is going to get him stopped up just shy of the 10. Give him six yards on the carry. It's going to be third and three now. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. One of the money routes for any offense, the drag route. So tough to defend because the receiver can stop at any point and make himself available to the quarterback and get a completion. But I love the communication we saw there. All the defenders pointing out the receiver, where he was going, and then they're able to rally to the ball after the catch and stop him short of a first down. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that gonna be enough? Excellent question because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, they're a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown on, there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because they'd feel a whole lot better about their position. Well, and a touchdown in the other direction, all of a sudden, they're down. And as this offense makes their way back out, it's AFC playoff race time as we give you a look. And with the final fortnight of games upon us, teams jockeying for position. Some of these games really starting to take enormous importance as they always do this time of year. I like how you use fortnight. Yeah, I'm impressed, yeah, I am impressed. That means two weeks, if that, I'm not mistaken, does. correct? That does. But how about exactly what you're talking about? Going down the stretch, how much importance is placed on these games? Look, everyone talks about every game's important. <laughs> when you get to this time of year, maybe that importance gets quadruple. And that's where we are right now to see who can make their last run, their last push to get into the playoffs. The last play on the completion got them half of what they needed. Now here's a tough third and five. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. But plain and simple, that's the second time today that he's dropped a pass. And that one, I think, maybe even a little easier than the earlier one that he dropped. Surprising. Was this game announced as a night game prior to, and maybe his rhythm is confused. just off? He's got know. thrown off. He's got to wake up, enjoy the sunshine, and go play. Oh, they come after him, and it's blocked. It's picked up. Remember, the ball is live. And he will score. Touchdown, Falcons. In for the score. And the Falcons push further out in front. Partners, you well know, every block punt wasn't necessarily a called block. Sometimes the guy just finds his way back there. Doesn't matter. The play happens, and that one turned into six points because they handled it so well after the block. Now a two-point conversion attempt forthcoming. They're going to try and run. And he's going to go down right at the line of scrimmage. The defense left him with nowhere to go. And the try for two is denied. 
Defensively, certainly not fooled there. Play started at the two, and he was tackled at the two. That has to feel good for them. Not happy about having given up the touchdown, but stopping the two-point conversion gives them a little bit of a lift as they head to the bench. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Carolina offense making their way out. We take a look at the playoff picture in the NFC. Let's go, defense. Our time. It's our time. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. That one goes for 24 yards. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. Now back to throw. Throw left side complete. That's Hubbard. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. And now it's first and ten. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. Back to throw. And that'll be incomplete. He was looking to get that one to D.J. Moore. That'll bring up second down. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. Back to throw here. That's complete to Disley, the tight end. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. The Panthers on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. This is third and seven. This is Johnson. He's got it. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 15-yard line. And a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified. Big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. On first down, Hubbard, and he'll get four there down to about the 12-yard line. Ready, ready. 70, Indy. Second and six. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete, so the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. They'll look to throw here to the goal line, but it's incomplete. Certainly looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one, knock it away, and brings up a fourth down decision. And the 12-year veteran knocks it right through, and that lead is back down to nine now. So they've put together a good little drive there, but ultimately stalling out in the red zone. Yeah, I know a lot of people look at it as a little bit of a negative. They didn't get six points out of it, right? Didn't get the touchdown. But that's actually okay. They got three points. It will give their defense a little bit of rest, let them settle down over there. So all in all to me, that's a good drive. Let's go, baby. Now the Falcons offense, they get ready to head back out here. Now there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. Looking for more there on first down, but this throw downfield, incomplete. They were looking for Johnson that time, and it's second down. 
Throwing again. Nix. I remember a coach telling me a long time ago the difference between playing corner and safety in the NFL. Yeah, corner is like the Autobahn. Everybody just flying by, and these corners have been really busy in this game, although they got it done on the last play. On the last play, yes, but there have been some good numbers put up against them offensively. Back to throw. Nix. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. Averaging over 50 yards a punt so far as this one's away. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. Carolina getting set to take the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you. And the Falcons get there. The Falcons get the sack. Down he goes. You never want to give up a sack. From the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they let little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it, but it's really, really difficult. You're talking about some terrific athletes who are trying to put him on the ground. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw, and that'll be incomplete. Well, they took their shot all right, but it comes up empty, and it's fourth down. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. He's going to look deep for more. And no, it's incomplete. And the Panthers turned away on fourth down. And now possession will go over inside the 15-yard line. So they really needed points here in a two-score game. Could not come away with anything there on fourth. And while we know they're a little bit discouraged here, they can't check out of this game. You and I have called a good number of games over the course of our career where we've seen these types of situations. Teams get the ball back and that miracle does occur. So they can't let that dream go just yet. They have to get stout on defense here. Yeah, right now, really hoping for... Oh, no, he lost the football. And it's picked up by the Panthers. Partner, that one looked like it was over. I mean, they had control, had the football, and the defense had to make a play in order to keep them in the game. That's exactly what they did. And now that door ajar, two-score game. So hold on here, not done in the fourth. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. He has a chance to hit that often elusive 200-yard mark on this drive. And most of the time during a game, people aren't keeping track of individual statistics. Are you sure? Well, a lot of the runners kind of know. <laughs> but I'll guarantee you, someone has sent word into the offensive line that he's got a chance to get over 200 on this drive. That should give them a little extra motivation because they love it when backs break that barrier. Absolutely. We'll see if he can do it. They come out here in the eye. Now, this is a nice little gift wrap situation as they take over first and goal. Looking to throw. Nix. And he will score. Touchdown, Falcons. It's their quarterback. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Falcons use the short field to their advantage as they cash in for six. But this was a pass all the way, but he just kept buying time, didn't he? It was kind of like, wait. Wait, oh, it's open. Time to hot foot it and go. And boy, was he successful. Yeah, didn't go to the outside toward the pylon, just straight ahead, middle third of the field. Shortest distance between two points. Straight line. Stepping up, he's going to keep it. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. Protection was great. He had time to set up a campsite. But in the secondary, though, they were ready. And I think that in most places on the field, if you have that much time to throw the ball, someone's going to shake free and you'll find an open receiver. But condensed near the goal line on a two-point conversion, all that exit, you know, there's not any extra field. So it kind of closes in on them, and that allows you to cover a little bit better. 
The throw right side is complete here on the first play of the drive. And they're able to get this one across the 35. The Panthers have the first. It's a gain of 12. At this stage, this drive's got to be touchdown or bust because you need two of them. And if I'm the offensive play caller, I'm not just looking at my dagger plays downfield. I'm looking at some of my specials, something that can fool them and give you a big play now. With a sense of urgency. No doubt. Second and 10. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and 10. He'll look to throw. And the throw there going to be incomplete. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. They're going to look to throw. Got his target, Samuel. And now look at this. Big gain, but a fumble. And the Falcons grab it. And they will set up shop at their own 46-yard line. Brandon, I don't want to violate any of our broadcasting rules by declaring a game over before it's over. But that one, that puts them in real jeopardy there. Absolutely. It was a two-possession game. It is a two-possession game at this stage in the fourth. They needed points out of that drop. And obviously now, no chance at all to get those points that they so desperately needed. Here are the Falcons as their offense heads back onto the field. Very good starting field position for the Falcons offense as they come up first and 10 at their own 46. And the catch made by Johnson. And to give this time to the tailback. He'll get three up to midfield. The Panthers turn to their nickel set here as they get ready for third down. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. It's a gain of 13 and a first down for Atlanta. Let's go! Well, probably the only thing he did wrong there was go out of bounds, nursing this fourth quarter lead. You want to stay in, eat the clock. Yeah, you got to love the effort, the catch, the extra yardage, but you've got to know the situation. Stay in bounds, young man. A pretty nice work defensively there on the first down run as they hold him to a gain of a couple. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Looking to throw on second down. Nix looking middle, and it's incomplete. The tight end, Max Williams, the intended receiver, and it's third down. On third down, Nix looking for his running back, and he's got him. A good chance now to put this game on ice. This is first and goal. Back to throw. Nix, well, this is caught by Williams. Fighting for the end zone. He lost the football. It's out. And it's picked up by the Panthers. So the defense there, opportunistic. It's nice to give them credit, isn't it? Because so many times it's more a matter of what the offensive guy didn't do. He didn't secure the ball, didn't cover up. In this case, let's just give credit to where it belongs. Knocked it free, made a big play. The Panthers offense here, they get ready to head back on the field. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Big word. I like it, though, yeah. because you're exactly you right. Like that, don't you? All game long, they've struggled moving the ball, turning it over on the last possession. Is that word again, symptomatic? Yeah, yeah. I like that. Your analysis, symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word, and I just kept using it. <laughs> They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. They'll set up to throw. Completes it to Samuel. And now look at this. Big gain, but a fumble. And the Falcons grab it. And he'll get this back to the 32-yard line. And now three drives. 
three fumbles. What's amazing about it is when we go around and watch practices, how many times do we see them put that sleeve over a football now to make it more slippery, yeah, slippery. and hard to handle? It's almost like they're playing with that sleeve on the ball right now. Was that three drives? Yep. Three, three fumbles? Three fumbles. It's time to change our luck some way, somehow. Focus, concentration, you'll hear those words on the bench in a big way right now. And here now come the Falcons. And so close to hitting pay dirt last time, fumbling down near the goal line. Now, how does that affect their psyche this time around? It's a tester, that's for sure, because to be that close and come up with no points is really disappointing, not just for the guys on offense, but the defensive players, too, who thought, hey, we're going to put some points up and have a little momentum going. They've got to find a way to just get it out of their minds, yeah. let it Short -term go, term memory, and move on to the next series. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Looking to throw. Nix. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. We got this. So it's Falcon football as we welcome you back. They've got it first and goal in a game that appears to have already been decided. They'll look to run with Freeman. And he'll actually lose a little bit of yardage here. Back to the two. And whistles and we're going to have another stoppage of play as they call the timeout on defense with 1.53 left. Back at the two now. Here's second and goal. Now it looks like he'll throw here. Under a heavy rush and down he goes. The Panthers going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Oh, they go with a tight end carry. And he'll find his way down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Now the Panthers going to signal for their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Sanders kick is good and that will make this now an 18 point ball game so with that you figure now oh, this game's pretty much out of reach at this point yeah it's gonna take a heck of a comeback to come from three scores down but don't change that channel don't go away miracles can happen and you want to be here Let's in go. case it does you're a company I'm man ready. aren't I though he's coming he's coming he can't hang he's not gonna get me right up. They'll try and start this drive in the air. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. Second and two. It'll be a gain of eight yards, and that'll make it a second down. After the incompletion here now, third and two. They'll set up a throw. And that will be incomplete. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Now, well, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. And a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. Now you've got to hustle your guys to the line and get them set. Wide open receiver complete. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. Looking to throw. Pass incomplete, but the flag in the backfield, and this might be a roughing call. Roughing the passer, defense. I think you'd agree that looked like the right call from up here. No doubt about it. What everyone has to understand is that the officials are going to be right on the play each and every time. You may not like the call. And he'll take this into the end zone. Touchdown, Carolina. D.J. Moore, his sixth touchdown of the season. And the Panthers are able to cut into this lead. A nice throw there by the second-year quarterback. And I don't believe that's the kind of play he would have made as a rookie because usually your rookie season is a continuation of your college days. A lot of one read, and if you don't have it, you just take off and go. 
Now he's settled in the pocket a little bit more, reading the field and getting to a second and sometimes third progression. That was a nice play. Hopkins with the extra point, and that'll make this now an 11-point deficit. So this drive spans seven plays. So time definitely not in their favor. Down two scores, but they'll try the onside kick. And this is going to be covered up by the Falcons. And that should just about seal it. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. So time runs out. It's a victory for the Atlanta Falcons. And I know I'm not breaking any news when I say that any road win in this league is a good one. No doubt. But it's a double bonus when you get a victory on the road in your division. And when you start a season, each team breaks down their schedule in different ways. Some do it every four games, right? Let's go quarterly. Others say, listen, we've got to take care of our home field. And, you know, out of a 16-game season, if you get eight at home, let's at least win seven at home and split our road games. That's what you're trying to get done. So you're exactly right. A road win, precious, especially within the division. So for Atlanta, the wins keep coming as this one moves them to 12-3 and three on the year. And they will head back home next week. Meanwhile, for the Panthers... Things get even uglier now as they fall to 2 and 13. And they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week.